Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial system. We have 2 times p of x minus q of x and p of x times q of x. And we're going to be solving for p of x and q of x. p of x and q of x are polynomials, which means they are special functions with non-negative powers of x. Okay, so we have the system. How can we solve it? Uh, there's a couple ways to go about it. Uh, let's go ahead and start by looking at the first method. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and use substitution because it's available. Let's go ahead and try to isolate qx from here. Not why not to uh, why not px because that would require division by two, which is something that I don't uh, very much like or not a big fan of, but it's okay, you can still do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch these two things around. x squared plus three x will be subtracted and qx will be uh, end, end, ending up on the right-hand side. In other words, we're gonna get something like this. Two p of x minus x squared minus three x equals q of x. Now this is something we can substitute here. Let's go ahead and do that p of x multiplied by q of x, which is 2 times p of x minus x squared minus 3x. And then when we substitute that for p of x, notice that we only have p of x as our variable. But what about x, right? Okay, don't worry about it for now. Let's go ahead and simplify this. The right-hand side is just going to be x to the fourth minus x squared. Now, as you can see here, this turns into a quadratic equation in p of x. But what about x? We can treat it as a constant, can't we? Sure. That can be done even though it kind of looks unusual because p of x also depends on x, so it's not completely quadratic, but it's kind of quadratic, okay? So if you distribute, you get 2 times p of x squared minus, and that's going to be the coefficient of p of x, so let's put that in parentheses again, uh, and that'll be multiplied by p of x. And then these two terms, we're going to bring them to the right-hand side, I mean to the left-hand side, because they will make up the constant. So they're going to be negated, and that will give us x squared minus x to the fourth, and the whole thing will be zero. Awesome. <laughs> now we got a quadratic equation, just pretend it's quadratic. It is actually quadratic somehow. And here's what we're going to do. We need to designate something for p of x, maybe y. That makes sense, right? It's like f of x. So let's go ahead and call this y. And at that point, I think it'll be more clear why this is called uh, quadratic in y, right? Do you see y? And x is considered a constant for now. Now, we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula for y. y equals negative b, which is x squared plus 3x, plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be our discriminant. Let's go ahead and write it down. I'll probably, next step, I'll simplify the discriminant and then just play, plug it in there so we don't have to write this gigantic thing every time. b squared minus 4ac, which is going to be 8 times x squared minus x to the fourth power. And all of that is divided by 2a, which is 4, because a is 2. All right? Cool. Now we got y in terms of x, and remember, y is p of x, so once we find the answer, like once we simplify this, we should find an expression for p of x, which is what we're looking for, right? And then we can go ahead and use substitution to find q of x. That part would be fairly easy. Now, let's go ahead and simplify this, but let's focus on the discriminant first. So delta is x squared plus 3x squared minus 8 times x squared minus x to the fourth power. We can definitely factor something out, but let's go ahead and expand it first. This will become x to the fourth plus 6x cubed, because I need to do 2ab, plus 9x squared minus 8x squared plus 8x to the fourth power. I'm hoping to get something uh, like a perfect square from here. Uh, x to the fourth plus 8x to the fourth is 9x to the fourth. That's good news. And then we have the 6x cubed, and then we have the x squared. Well, does it look like a perfect square to you? Hopefully it does because this is 3x squared plus x quantity squared. If you don't see that, you can always factor out an x squared and write it this way first, and then hopefully this will become more clear because this is 3x plus 1 quantity squared. Make sense? Either way, you're going to get the following result. Now, we can go ahead and plug it in, and since we're going to square root to delta, 
we can just forget about the square root and the square, just write it as is, but don't forget the plus minus sign because that'll make a difference. So now y is going to be x squared plus 3x, uh-oh, x squared plus 3x, and then plus minus, plus minus discriminant, the square root of delta, which is 3x squared plus x, I still should use parentheses, and then all of that is divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. Awesome. Now notice that this simplified nicely, which means we're going to have a nice answer, of course, because polynomials are nice, right? So y from here, there's going to be two solutions, by the way. One of them is going to be x squared plus 3x plus 3x squared plus x all over 4. If you simplify this, you get 4x squared plus 4x divided by 4, which is x squared plus x. Awesome. What about the other y value? y sub 2 is just going to be x squared plus 3x minus 3x squared minus x all over 4. And this is just going to be negative 2x squared plus 2x divided by 4. And you could probably write it as negative x squared plus x divided by 2. Interesting. I was not expecting to get a second answer, but this turns out to be quadratic. Let me, I'll tell you why I was not expecting something like this. But remember, these are the p of x values because we set p of x equal to y and now we solve for y and we got the p of x values. There are two solutions for p of x, which means there's going to be two solutions for q of x. But how do you solve for q of x? Easy. We have a formula. Remember, we replace q of x with this. And now we can go ahead and plug in p of x to find q of x. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and copy that. q of x is going to be, what was it? 2p of x minus x squared minus 3x. If you use one of the solutions, you're going to get 2 times p of x, which is x squared plus x minus x squared minus 3x. And that will give you x squared minus x. This is one of the values for q of x, and maybe we can call this q sub 1, but we didn't designate a variable. So maybe this is going to be our first p of x, and this is going to be the second p of x. This will be our first q of x, and the second q of x is just going to come from the other solution for p of x, which had a 2 at the denominator, remember that? So the 2 is going to cancel out. We'll get a nice, nice polynomial, minus x squared minus 3x. 2 cancels out, and then from here, the second solution for q of x, becomes negative 2x squared minus 2x. Therefore, we can write the solution as, you know, x squared plus x comma, what is the first solution? x squared minus x. And then that was, first one is p, second one is q, by the way. Or we can write the first solution as negative x squared plus x over 2, and the second one as negative 2x squared minus 2x. Okay, let me tell you something. There's an alternative solution method for this problem. Let's just talk about it real quick because I want to keep it real quick. Okay, for obvious reasons. So now, the second solution works as follows. We're going to try to guess and check, okay? Because x to the fourth minus x squared is factorable. I can factor out x squared. That will give me x squared minus 1. And then again, this is x times x times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now, there's one way to do this. Uh, well, actually, there's more than one way to do it, but... Basically, the idea is we need to split p of x and q of x from here. So I can take these two and take those two, which will work, by the way, or I could take the x squared with x squared minus 1. I could take this and I could take that. Obviously, it's not going to work here with this first equation, but trial and error is going to give you the right solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.